I love seasonal eating. It has got to be one of my favorite things about growing our own food. And Jerusalem artichokes are one of my favorite vegetables to grow for winter abundance. These tubers are super easy to grow. They are resistant to most critters and diseases and they taste amazing. Stay tuned until the end for my creamy Jerusalem artichoke bake recipe. It may look pretty bleak up here now, but in late summer, Jerusalem artichokes give an amazing display of beautiful yellow flowers. And they also grow in partial shade too, which is one of the reasons we've let them pretty much take over the whole of this bed here as other plants struggle to grow in the partial shade of our hedge. And we are rewarded with beautiful flowers and a bountiful harvest as well. Okay, so what about the gas? My advice is to start slow. Eat just a little, but fairly regularly, say once a week, and then slowly over the winter, build up the volume or the regularity that you are eating Jerusalem artichokes, and you might just find that your digestion gets used to it. I believe the younger tubers may have a stronger effect here. So leaving them in the ground for longer could help. We just harvest ours as we need right through the winter until they start sprouting again. And lastly, peel your Jerusalem artichokes. No science here, but I have just noticed that when I peel the skin off, the gas is often a lot less. For me though, personally, the flavor outweighs any negative effects. In this crazy world full of unnecessary chemicals and too much packaging, growing my own food is the best way to know what I'm getting and what I'm putting in my body. So for that reason, I'm sticking with the Jerusalem artichokes. And here's one of my favorite recipes to use up these delicious tubers. For this recipe, you will need approximately five to 600 grams of peeled Jerusalem artichokes, a handful of waxy potatoes, two to three medium leeks, including the greens, two to three cloves of garlic or one large elephant garlic, and a good handful of seasonal fresh herbs. I use parsley or chervil here. Then you'll need 250 millilitres of cream, approximately 200 millilitres of milk, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast is optional. You'll need salt and pepper to taste and some grated cheese for the top if you choose. We use plant-based versions, but dairy would work fine here as well. I also prefer to use ceramic pans instead of nasty Teflon ones. Peel and rinse all of your Jerusalem artichokes. And then chop them into slices or chunks, whatever you prefer. Adding them into your pan as you go. Then do the same with your potatoes. I don't peel mine, but that is up to you. I also chop the potatoes slightly bigger than the Jerusalem artichoke, as the artichoke takes slightly longer to cook, I find. Next, roughly chop your leeks. I use all of the white stem and also all of the greens as well. They both have amazing flavour. The garlic goes in next, either well chopped 
or you can put it through a garlic press. Add some salt to taste and then some black pepper and then you can give everything a really good mix either with a spoon or I like to use my hands to massage it all in. Finally for the fresh ingredients chop up all of your herbs really well so they're nice and small and add those to the pan as well. Add two tablespoons of nutritional yeast if you are using it. Then pour over your cream. Next add your milk and I just use the cream container to get a rough measurement of the amount of milk needed. Then give it all a really good stir. Cover with tin foil or use a pan with a lid if you have one. And then pop it in a warm oven that's set to approximately 180 degrees Celsius or about gas mark 6 to 7 and you'll want to bake it with the lid on for about 25 to 35 minutes depending on how big you've chopped your vegetables. After the first cooking time, take the pan out of the oven, remove the lid and give everything a really good stir. Smooth off the top and if you are adding cheese, pop it on the top here. If you'd like a crunchier topping, you can mix the cheese with some breadcrumbs or mix it with nuts and seeds as well to make it really yummy. You'd put that on now as well. Then put your pan back in the oven on the top shelf and this time leave it uncovered. Bake for a further 20 to 30 minutes until everything is bubbling and really nicely crispy. I like to serve it with fresh greens and a nut roast or just with the greens if I put the crunchy nutty topping on it as well.